What grade are you guys in? Six. Six. All right, guys, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to talk about some science here, and I promise uh, when we're through, we'll do something fun. Uh, here's the deal. When I leave here, I'll go in this room and in front of about 200,000 people, I'll talk about weather. So what do you think we're going to talk about today? Weather. <laughs> Listen, I have no interest in talking about TV or any of this stuff. I stand in front of a green wall. That's the easy part. The hard part is predicting the future. Hey, predicting the future is hard. Has anybody ever filled out a March Madness bracket? Good luck with that. It's not easy, guys. So uh, the first thing I do is look at data from weather instruments. We have these all over Alabama. At all of these sites, we have a camera. We have an anemometer that measures wind. We have a hygrometer that measures water. Hey, let's talk about water. Water can be a liquid, a solid, or a what? Gas. Yes. There is always water in the air. We measure water vapor with a hygrometer. And also in there, there's a barometer. Is there air in this room, yes or no? Yes. Everybody breathe in. <laughs> breathe out. Hey, we have some emphysema cases. We'll see the school nurse in a minute. Hey, 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 guys, if there was, you know there's air in here. You couldn't breathe if we didn't have it. And you ought to know this now. You guys are in sixth grade. Air molecules have weight and density. The air weighs something. You cannot feel it, but I can measure it with a barometer. And I put all this data together and I make maps. And hey, I am not happy. You know what we've learned? Most people your age, and most people my age cannot find their house on a map, okay? Hey, phones are great. They give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. They're awesome. But hey, when the weather is dangerous, when there are tornadoes going on around here, guess what we use? Maps. And if you can't find your house on a map, you've got a problem. Hey, this is the uh, current weather map. Uh, today, I will see about 200 maps. 200, okay? You have to understand geography to do meteorology, okay? Uh, and, uh, ooh, I see a blue line at Memphis. You know what that blue line is called? A cold front. Hey, that's going to make it turn cooler over the next few days. Um, and by the way, all my maps have numbers. Hey, when I was in sixth grade, I was not a good reader. My reading comprehension was not good. Uh, I was not the best writer, but I could work that math. I love numbers. I work with numbers every day, and again, to do what I do, you need to be kind of good with math, okay? Every number on that map tells me a story about weather. Red numbers are temperatures. Green numbers are dew points, how much water's in the air. Big numbers come off the barometer. Hey, when the barometer is high, what letter shows up? H. When the barometer is low, what shows up? L. Hey, when you see an H on a weather map, that doesn't mean hot. It means the barometer is high, air is heavy, and air is sinking. When air sinks, it doesn't rain. But around lows, that's where air rises. In fact, we actually have one, a weak one near us today, uh, which means it will probably rain later today or tonight, and air goes up. Uh, and, and half my job is figuring out if air is going up or down, which means the air has waves, okay? There's a good chance you have been to the Gulf Coast or a beach somewhere, and you've seen waves in the ocean. Air has waves. This is the uh, wave map this morning, and that blue up there around the Great Lakes, that's a wave developing. That's a big one. Uh, on the back side, air is sinking. On the front side, air is rising. And I have to know where these waves are to forecast the weather, okay? And by the way, this is the flow about 18,000 feet off the ground. And the next question is, how in the world do I know what the weather's like 18,000 feet off the ground? Well, we do things you guys don't know about. We launch balloons twice a day. What gas do you think we put in there? Helium. helium. We used to, but now it's expensive. There's a shortage. What is a good substitute gas for helium? Hydrogen. It's flammable. You have to be careful with it. But every morning we inflate the balloon with hydrogen. Down below the uh, balloon on the cord, there's an orange parachute. And he's got in his hand a white box, and that's what does all the work. It's called a radio sign. In the box, we have all the instruments, a hygrometer, barometer, and we launch these twice a day. And on the way up, it measures wind and pressure and moisture, all the things we talked about. And listen, guys, a lot of times it rains because of something up there, not down here, okay? So without this, I couldn't do my job. The only problem... On the way up, my balloon starts to expand because of the lack of air pressure. And by the time this is 20 miles up, guess what happens? Yeah, it pops, and that little white box comes all the way down to the ground. Hey, if you ever find a white box in your yard like that, that means a weather balloon popped over your house. That's cool. We don't get most of these back. They wind up in the woods, lakes, rivers, but every once in a while you might find one. And if you ever do find one, 
We would like for you to stick it in this little bag that comes with it and mail it back for free and we can recondition those and use them again. Somebody found one down at the beach one day in the middle, that's all that's left of the balloon. The parachute is on the lower left and the little white box is called a radio sonde and that's what does all the work. So those are balloons, but they pop about 20 miles up. But hey, I got something higher than that. What is this? Yeah. Hey, these are 22,500 miles over the Earth's equator, and every 60 seconds this thing captures an image of the planet, and this is what we look like this morning at 5 o'clock. That is too stinking cool. That is our planet this morning at 5 a.m. local time is seen from 22,000 miles in space. This is outstanding. And by the way, I think everybody in here should be able to see two hurricanes. On the left over here, this is Hurricane Lee. On the right, this is Hurricane Margo. These are in the Atlantic. We are over here. In fact, if you look carefully, you'll see the city lights. There's Atlanta and there's Birmingham. And the line of clouds right here, that is our cold front, okay? But guys, this is outstanding. Hey, without this, we couldn't see those hurricanes. We would have no idea they're out there. Without this, we couldn't see things that will affect us in days. We can see weather systems days and days before they get here. So these are weather satellites. And the bottom line is they show clouds, but there's a problem here. Weather satellites show the tops of clouds, and we do not live on top of a cloud. We live underneath that. So we have to have something else to show me what goes underneath all of that. We have something to do that called radar. And the radar looks like a soccer ball sitting on top of a tower. People drive by this thing every day. They have no idea what that is. But inside that ball, there's an antenna that constantly spins around, shooting out little beams of energy that you cannot see. But if we have raindrops around, those beams of energy bounce off the raindrops, they bounce back to the antenna, happens faster than you can blink your eyes, okay? And we make maps where the bouncers are coming from, and my maps look like this. I was at a school yesterday, some kid said, hey man, dude, that's Minecraft. Uh, no. Hey, here's what I told that kid. I said, uh, hey man, uh, dude, that's not Minecraft, that's radar, okay? You guys better know how this works. And listen, I'm not gonna pull any punches with you guys. I don't tell this to first graders. I don't tell this to third graders, but I'll tell this to you. That storm killed 23 people. And you better know what you're looking at because hey, one day you're gonna be looking at some phone and you will not have me to help you, okay? Now the basics are easy. The weak returned energy, that's gray, blue, and green. Where you see gray, blue, and green, barely raining, no big deal. The yellow, that's the moderate returned energy, and the really heavy returned energy is red and white. When you see red and white on these maps, it is raining so hard, you can't see the house across the street, and normally with white hail is falling. So that's cool, by glancing at that, you can see where it's raining and the intensity of the rain. But again, this is a really dangerous storm, and obviously, what's going on here? A tornado. Everybody in this room, you better, you better be able to see where that tornado is without thinking twice. And if you don't know, I'll teach you, okay? A lot of people think it's up in the big red and white blob. No, it's in the circle right there. Uh, in the back of the storm, in the colors of yellow and orange, there is the shape of a hook. At the end of the hook, in the circle, there is a spot of red and white. And there's no heavy rain there. You know what that was? That was the radar beam returning off items being lofted by the tornado, like boards and bricks and glass and nails and tree limbs. That is called a debris ball, okay? So that's the tornado moving along. But the good thing about this is the fact that we can tell people they're coming. Hey, we're talking about science today. Some of you girls in here and some of you boys are gonna work in science one day and maybe mine meteorology but listen whatever science discipline you work in here's the cool thing you can take the knowledge that we have and use it to help other people and by the way that's why you're here life's not about you i'm sorry it's sure not about me it's about helping other people and hey if we can tell somebody a tornado's coming and give them time to go to a safe place that's a good thing but here's the way radar works i throw a basketball against a brick wall what's it going to do bounce back uh but wait 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 what if that brick wall is moving? It's not gonna come right back to me. It's gonna bounce back here or here based on the motion of the wall. And raindrops are always moving. The beam comes back differently. It's called the Doppler shift. 
and we can calculate wind. Here's the same story. This is wind. All the green pixels are inbound. All the orange pixels are outbound. That's a violent tornado. Here's a violent tornado. And again, guys, everybody in here should be able to see it in both frames. On the left, that's rain. On the right, that's wind. And the rain is right there in that white spot at the end of the hook, a debris ball. And the wind is where the colors are touching. Green is inbound. Pink is outbound. Here's a violent tornado, same thing. You guys can do this, okay? And the rain is at the end of the hook. That's the debris ball right there. And then the wind is where the colors are touching right there. And we'll talk more about tornadoes in a minute, but let's kind of build a storm. Uh, and it starts with clouds and hey, uh, here's an idea. When you go outside, look up sometimes. Now everybody walks outside and they stare at their phone looking at the tweeter and the talk and all this stuff. Uh -uh, guys, put that thing down and look up. You're missing the greatest show on earth, all right? Uh, low clouds are called stratus, high clouds are called cirrus. I like cirrus clouds. Those are about 25,000 feet off the ground. It's so cold up there. Those are ice crystals and they refract the light. They make for a great sunrise or a sunset. But a storm begins with a cumulus cloud. The ones over here, they look like little marshmallows. Almost every summer day, you'll see those in the afternoon. And they grow vertically like you. And when they get really tall and it starts to rain, you call it cumulo nimbus and here's a cool thing to do with a phone on a summer afternoon put the thing on time lapse and point it out the window and you'll see that those are cumulus clouds developing vertically into cumulonimbus clouds the process is called convection okay and these storms can be 50 60 000 feet tall in summer you can see them from a great distance away they look like mushroom clouds those are storms about 50 60 miles away and in a convective cell, warm air currents rise, the air gets cold, and then the air falls. Updraft, downdraft, okay? And in the middle, it's absolute chaos. In the middle, you've got raindrops that are in the updraft, some in the downdraft, they're constantly colliding. And up in the top up here, this is all snow and ice, and the snowflakes and ice pellets are colliding. And the collisions, after a while, will generate electrical charges, and soon you will have a discharge of electricity that looks like that, okay? And by the way, Storms aren't bad. I don't know why people don't like them. If we don't have them, you can't live here. You can't go to school here. There's no water. The creeks will dry up. Listen, guys, there's no new water being made. We use the same water over and over. You learn this in kindergarten, the water cycle. And a big part of the water cycle is precipitation. Where we live, most of it comes from storms. And again, if we don't have these, we're hosed. Uh, the river out here would be dry. No lakes, no rivers, no water. We have to move. So they're a vital part of the water cycle, and uh, they all have lightning. And by the way, you know, here's a weird thing about you guys. I have no trouble with first, second, third, fourth graders and storms. They get it. When there's a storm outside, guess what you do? Go inside. It's not rocket science, okay? But about the time you hit sixth and seventh grade, I don't know what it is, and this goes all the way through old age, people my age, people often don't do that. Let me show you a good reason why you might want to go inside during a storm. Watch the tree in the middle and see if you see lightning strike that tree about right now. Whoa. Top of the tree is going to collapse and it's not raining. The storm is about five miles away. And uh, this is a really good reason why you might want to be uh, inside. And by the way, when lightning runs through an air channel, the air heats up in about one second to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hotter than the surface of the sun. And when air gets that hot in one second, the air expands so rapidly, there is explosive effect we know as thunder. So when you hear thunder, you get inside. And you sure don't want to go swimming, okay, when there's a storm around. And again, hey, I'll shoot straight with you guys. I'm a straight shooter. We had a 12-year-old girl killed at Gulf Shores not too long ago by lightning. She, she, heard, she was out there with her friends praying volleyball. And listen, storms happen every day down there. It's no big deal. But they heard thunder and they didn't get in and that cost her her life. Life is a series of decisions, all right? Your goal is to make more good ones than bad ones. And by the way, three of her friends had third degree burns and if you don't know what that is, you don't wanna know. It's painful, it's disfiguring, and it's life changing. So it's not worth it, guys. When you hear thunder, just get in. Like these clowns right here, they have no business being out here playing volleyball. That's just bad. And, and the way it works, lightning runs way ahead of a storm. Look at that, guys. The, the cumulonimbus is right there in the middle. The rain is falling in the middle, but the lightning is about five miles away. Lightning can run up to eight miles away from a storm. That's the rule. If there's lightning within eight miles, everything outside has to stop. 
I've stopped the Southeastern Conference football game, okay? I do weather support for a large college in the state. We had a lightning hit within seven miles. I call the official. I'm talking to the head official. I say, hey, lightning within seven miles. He stopped it immediately, and I didn't stop it. He did. But the players went in the locker room, and the fans went into the concourse. That was the right thing to do. Uh, so let's talk about severe storms. I, I want to get into convection and severe storms and tornadoes real quick. Uh, there's a good chance you've heard us say that. A storm is severe. Most of you have no idea what that means. You need to know, okay? Only two things can make a storm severe. One is high wind. The wind has to be 58 miles per hour or greater. Here's a severe storm. Just about a month ago, uh, doorbell camera, uh, watch the barbecue grill over here in the left. That's going to be the first to go. In a minute, the wind's going to gust to about 65, 70 miles per hour. When that gust happens, watch the tree and you'll see what happens about right now. It's down. So that is a severe storm because of wind. The only other way a storm can be severe, it's this. What's falling in that grass? Hail. Little balls of ice. Most storms don't have any hail, but every once in a while they can. And if we ever see hail larger than one inch in diameter, that is the size of a quarter, we call the storm severe, all right? Uh, this is no good. When hail gets that big, that means the updraft is strong, the air in the top of the cloud is cold, the convection is deep. Hey, 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 that's a Mountain Dew can. Hey, if you sent that picture to me, you got it right. We know the size of the can, and we can calculate the size of the hail. That's a great shot. But hail this large, every car windshield out here will be shattered. The roof up here will be shredded. What kind of a ball is this right here? Uh, softball. That's softball sized hail, okay? Uh, so, look, hey, I gotta do some storm spotting. We don't have enough storm spotters here, okay? A lot of people will call us up and they mean, they wanna help us, but they don't know how. So I'm gonna give you a test and let's see how you do. Is this a tornado, yes or no? Yes. The right answer is no. Is there anything happening down at the ground? No. If, hey, if there was a tornado there, debris would be flying everywhere. This is the back of a storm under the uptrap, and that is called a wall cloud. And we need to know about them. People say, well, it's not a big deal. It's not a tornado. Well, here's the deal. This is where tornadoes come from. So if we get a good report of a wall cloud, we can issue a more timely warning and give people more time to go to a safe place. So if you're gonna report that to me, that's a wall cloud on the back of a storm, not a tornado. So let's go to the front. Is that a tornado, yes or no? No. Anything happening down there in the water? No. If there was a tornado there, you'd see stuff all over the place. This is called a shelf cloud. Hey, these happen on the front of storms, and they are very common in summer. Almost every storm has them. This is down at Panama City Beach. Shelf clouds are really not a big deal. I mean, they look creepy, but this has nothing to do with a tornado, nothing to do with a wall cloud. That's a shelf cloud on the leading edge of a storm. So you report that to me, you got a shelf cloud. Is this a tornado, yes or no? The right answer is no. There is no rapid rotation. No rotation at all. That thing goes away in about five minutes. There's no debris in the base of that. This is called a scud cloud. This happens a lot. And people report that as a tornado. Remember, a tornado, the rotation is gonna be rapid and violent and you'll see debris. That's just a scud cloud. That thing is harmless, okay? So is this a tornado, yes or no? The right answer is no, this is called a dust devil. Hey, hey, there's no storm here, it's a sunny day. There's no storm. To have a tornado, you've got to have a storm. This is a ground-based vortex. These happen all the time on a hot, dry, dusty summer day. I love those things. When I was a kid, the other kids would run away from those things, I would run right into that. You get sandblasted, but that's called a dust devil. A ground-based vortex, nothing to do with a tornado. Is this a tornado, yes or no? The answer is no, there's nothing happening at the ground, that's a wall cloud. So if you report that to me, you're going to say it is a wall cloud, not a tornado, okay? Is this a tornado, yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Now you got it. Now you see the dirt and the debris in the base of the tornado. So, storms are good, tornadoes are not. Uh, the only good thing I can think of about a tornado is they don't happen a lot. Hey, nobody saw a tornado outside today because... We didn't have one. You might live to be as old as me and you will never see one. Guys, never be afraid of these. 
It's like fires. When I was in first grade, a fireman came and told us what to do, stop, drop, and roll. I, listen, there's nothing to be fearful here, but you've got to understand them, okay? By the way, this is not where we live. This is not Alabama. Alabama tornadoes don't look like that. Around here, it rains so much that rain wraps all the way around the tornado. This is in Kansas where their storms are drier. And by the way, we have hills and trees, if you haven't noticed. And you can't see most of the tornadoes here because of them. In Kansas, they don't have those. And hey, many of our tornadoes don't happen during the day, they happen when? At night, okay? Uh, let me show you one in Andover, Kansas last year. This is what they do. You'll never see this here because rain wraps all the way around this, but this is what they do. A tornado is a violently rotating updraft. Tornadoes really don't touch down, they're air going up, and they take objects from below and they bring it up. And every tornado gets a number based on the damage they cause. The weakest tornado is an EF zero, the biggest is an EF what? Five. That's a three, that's a mid-range tornado. Uh, now let me show you one in Alabama. Same size tornado, you don't see it. It's there doing the exact same thing. It's right in the middle. This is an EF3. And by the way, a lot of people say, oh, hey, man, that's only a three. It's not a five. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Uh, on this day, uh, about 10 minutes after that video was taken, that hit my house. That was a bad day. The damage was horrible. But Everybody was okay, and that's all that matters. We can fix everything else. We have to be sure that people are okay. People heard the warning. They had a plan. They knew what to do, and they're okay. And yeah, it was a bad day. Uh, here's one down at the beach this summer. This is down at Sandestin. Look at the base of the tornado, and you'll see debris swirling right down through here. That's a tornado that's down. It's kind of hard to see because of the trees. And I'm telling you guys, weather spotting is not easy because of hills and trees and the fact that most of them are rain rat. Well, let's go back 12 years, 12 years ago. We had a nasty day 12 years ago, about the time you guys were born. Nasty. April 27, 2011. This is Alabama history. We had 62 tornadoes in one day. That's a map of all of them. We had three fives. And the one that came through here was a five, that purple line. It originated down here, came through Hackleburg, Phil Campbell, and came right up through here. Uh, we had three fives that day. We had a lot of fours. And by the way, most tornadoes are zeros and ones, okay? Let me show you guys number 37. This is down the road in Cullman. This is an EF4 developing live on television right here. By the way, uh, this creeper guy is me. Uh, this, all, hey, I got the easiest job in the world. All I'm doing is standing in front of a green wall in a dry studio, okay? But this was a violent tornado that uh, came through Cullman. About 18,000 people lived there and everybody was okay. They heard the warning, they knew what to do, they had a plan, but after it left Coleman County, it came through Marshall County, which is right below you, and uh, in a small town called Ruth, it killed five members of one family. Uh, a six-year-old girl named Ari Hallmark, uh, that one day in her house, she lost her parents, two of her grandparents, and a cousin. Five caskets in one family. Hey, weather is serious sometimes, and we've got to be better. In fact, again, I'll shoot straight with you guys. I don't tell this to first graders. On this one day, 252 people were killed here. Some were your age, some were mine. Tornadoes affect real people at a real place at a real time, and you've got to understand this, okay? Never be afraid of this, but you've got to understand it. Here's one of our fives this day. This thing is so big, it doesn't even look like a tornado. That is a large, violent wedge EF5 tornado. That's the one it came to here. The wind velocity was in excess of 200 miles per hour. This is coming up on Hackleburg and Phil Campbell southwest of here. And, and again, you know, looking at that, it just looks like a big cloud kind of sitting on the ground. But no, that's, you were looking at graphic violence, okay? Uh, and, but the good thing about this, people had plenty of warning. People in some cases have 45 minutes to go to a safe place, okay? Like, let me show you that large wedge EF5 on radar. It's right here, and you'll see the hook and the debris ball, and it came right up through here. Uh, here's one in a town called Tusca. I don't like to watch this. Hey, I moved here when I started fifth grade. I'm from some little bitty town in South Alabama, and when I was in second grade, my father walked out one night. He never came back. My father never said goodbye, have a nice life, see you later. My father never told me that he loved me and I don't know if he did. He never paid a dime of child support and I have no siblings and it was me and my mom and we were broke and we moved here when I started fifth grade. And there were some wonderful people that loved us and encouraged us and helped us and we made it. Wasn't easy, but we made it. 
So this is kind of a special place, and I don't like to watch this. That's live on, on television. This is from the ground. And by the way, don't you dare do this. Uh-uh. A lot of people, they, they want to go out and shoot video of a tornado and get it on their social media feeds and make some, you know, I'm going to make $100 from Google or TikTok or something. Guys, we have reason to believe five people were killed doing just that. You don't do that. You go to a safe place. The two men shooting this video, they've been trained for 12 years. They know they're safe. It's moving away from them. And they're doing this to help us communicate the message. They're not doing it to, for glory or for their namesake, okay? Uh, the wind down there is about 190 miles an hour. See the stuff in the tornado? That's what makes the debris ball on radar. Those are parts of buildings being lofted, okay? Is a car a good place during a tornado, yes or no? No. Never, never be in a car. Guys, it's a death trap. This guy was going to drive right into it, and by the grace of God, he could see it. Remember, most tornadoes around here you don't see, but he could see this, and when he saw it, he put his car in reverse, and that saved his life. Five people were killed on that highway. Five. They, they drove right into it. You cannot be in a car during a tornado warning in a polygon. You can't do that, okay? Uh, now, here's one good thing about tornadoes. Most of them don't last long. Most tornadoes, again, they're zeros and ones. They're down for five minutes, 10 minutes, they're gone. This was different. This was a violent long track tornado that was down for over two hours. This tornado originated in eastern Mississippi and it stayed down until it got just north of Birmingham. Uh, now, by the time it got to Birmingham, you don't see it. This is the tornado right in here, but now it's all wrapped in rain. It's there doing severe damage. You don't see it. That's what most tornadoes look like here. The only thing you can see are some lightning strikes about right now. Uh, but hey, if this ever happens, I've got an idea. Go help somebody, okay? Uh, at the time, our son was playing high school baseball, and we took a little time off and went to help some families. And by the way, that kid taught us a lot about life. That kid lost to every possession. You don't even know what that's like, and I don't either. When the tornado hit our house two and a half years ago, the roof stayed on, so we could live there while they fixed it. They didn't have that option. But he was happy, and his family, they were all happy because they got into a safe place, and they were thankful they were alive, and they knew they would get some help, and they did. They have a nice new house today. But real quick, a tornado's coming on you guys in a small room, small. Hall, closet, bathroom. This house hit by an EF4. Uh, roof gone, walls gone, he's fine. He was sitting in the hall. Every hall, closet, bathroom was good. I took these pictures, I know the stories. In this business, they're fine. They were sitting in the hall. Anywhere else, they would not have survived. Now, many of my friends live in trailer homes. They're great, it's like cars. Cars are great. When I leave here in a few minutes, I'm gonna hop in a car and go to work. Uh, trailers are great, but you can't stay there. Three people died here. We don't know what happened. Did they not hear the warning? Did they hear the warning and not do anything? Or maybe they didn't have transportation. We don't know. But you can't stay in a mobile home or a trailer, okay? Uh, and the biggest problem we've got today, a lot of people don't even hear the warnings. Here's something weird. We don't understand this. Some people honestly believe they're gonna hear a siren before a tornado. No, you're not. Who said that? You can't hear a siren in here, in a house, in a car, no. No, and phones are great, they are important, yes, but sometimes self-service stops working and your fancy phone becomes a brick. Everybody in here needs this little white box in your house. That is called a weather radio, okay? Weather radio has nothing to do with a cell network. I have one at our house. If I have one, you need one. Please ask your parents to buy one, okay? It's like a smoke alarm in your house for a tornado. But real quick, you guys, I don't know the basics here. Uh, small room, lowest floor near the center, no windows, no traders, and you're gonna wear a helmet. Most people die or are seriously injured in tornadoes from the shoulders up. And by putting on a bicycle helmet, batting helmet, football helmet, motorcycle helmet, that really makes you safe. Never be afraid of this, but you gotta understand this, okay? Alabama's tornado season is November through May. What month is this? <laughs> September. This is not tornado season. The, the, the season begins in November, which is coming soon. But this is, this season, what's this? Hurricanes. This is Hurricane Lee this morning. This is one of the two I showed you on the satellite imagery out of the Atlantic. Uh, this is hurricane season. Hurricanes born over the ocean. Hey, last time I checked, there is no ocean in Athens, but there's one not too far away. Uh, and the water's got to be warm. These happen in summer and early fall. This is the peak of the hurricane season right now. This is one last year called Hurricane Ian. We give them names. We don't name tornadoes. Tornadoes don't last long enough. 
Uh, Ian coming up on Fort Myers. Here's one called uh, Laura a couple of years ago. Uh, there's the well-defined I. This is one called Ida right here coming off the coast of Louisiana. But I got a problem. We, I got a big problem. Hey, we do not have weather stations over the ocean. So what do we do? Well, you got to fly into these things. The United States Air Force, these are hurricane hunters. They fly those C-130 airplanes right into hurricanes. And this is a nasty, bumpy flight. You don't want to fly with these guys. They don't fly over hurricanes. They don't fly around hurricanes. They fly through the middle of them at 10,000 feet. It's bad. You can't see anything. The turbulence is severe, but what they do, they take the little white boxes like we launch on those balloons, they drop them down the bottom of the aircraft, they measure the wind and the pressure, and they send it back to the world. These people are absolute heroes. They're flying a flight now into Hurricane Lee. They don't get enough credit, but something weird is about to happen on this flight. This is off the coast of Louisiana and it's about to get really smooth. These guys are about to punch into the eye of this major hurricane. In a minute, you're gonna see clouds off in the distance. The minute you see those clouds off in the distance, they are in the eye, which is gonna happen about right now. Boom, they're in the eye. And this is weird, if you look up, you're gonna see blue sky and sunshine. That is the eye of a major Gulf of Mexico hurricane is seen from a Hurricane Hunter aircraft 10,000 feet off the ground. As bad as that flight is, I would like to do that one day. So hurricanes happen in summer and early fall. Personally, my favorite season is winter because guess what happens sometimes? Yeah. Hey, 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 this was a good day. This was two and a half years ago. It snowed a lot, February of 2021. Now, this is looking out my office window at my house. By the way, you wanna know something really sad? You see all those trees, they're gone. One month after that, the tornado came through and take them, they took them all out. It was a wild year for weather, but this was a good snow day. The roads weren't that bad. We had power. We knew this was coming. By the way, uh, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like in a weather office. When it snows, it looks like this right here. And you guys have no sense of humor. That's okay. Uh, hey, th this, is, uh, this is like, I want to say this is like just right down the road in Hartzell. This bonehead is sitting on top of a recliner being pulled on a car hood being pulled behind a truck. What could go wrong here? I mean, we don't get a lot of snow here. We know how to have fun. Here's a guy doing the same thing on a surfboard. And again, this was two and a half years ago, February of 2021. It snowed a lot that month. In fact, you're not gonna believe what we found. I wanna say it was right here in Athens. You won't believe it. We found a unicorn right here. Uh, that, that little girl is being pulled behind a four-wheeler on a snow-covered dirt road. She's not going that fast, but she was laughing. She was having a good time. But the morning these videos were captured, it was about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. 14. That's pretty cold for Alabama. You're not going to believe what this guy's doing. He's going in. Uh-uh. Polar bear plunge. This is not working for me. That is ice water. Uh-uh. So, I mean, this is just too weird. So this guy, he gets out of the pool and he takes off his glasses and he decides he's going to go right back in. No, that's not working for me. But hey, Alabama is a very pretty state when it snows. Some days we have good snow, some days we have bad snow. This is bad. Uh, hey, we messed up. Guess what? There's a lot of things we don't know. And we didn't do good on this because we thought the roads were not gonna be that bad. We were wrong. Here's what happened. Hey, it snowed a couple of inches, no big deal. The ground was warm, the snow melted, but it was 18 degrees and we had a flash freeze. The, the snow melt turned to ice. That's never happened in all my years. And the roads were solid ice. Everybody tried to go home at once and some of these people got stuck down there for 12 hours, running out of gas, getting cold and hungry. You know what they're doing? On the side of the road, they're burning anything they could burn to stay warm. And this is a reminder, there's a lot of things we don't know, and there's a lot of things we cannot do. Hey, I need some of you to get in my science and help us. I promise with all my heart, by the time, by the time you guys get to college, there's gonna be a lot to learn, okay? Uh, the science of weather is called meteorology. And there's some really good colleges around here that offer that. And I think one good thing about my job, hey, I get to learn something every day. I learned something on that day. And I will learn something today. And the other good thing about this is the fact that we get to help people when the weather is dangerous, okay? Hey, I need one person to do something real quick. I need one volunteer that's smart and you. Yeah, get up here. Yeah, let's go. Come on. This is where the program becomes unhinged, okay? We're almost done. I can see the, the death stare from our administrative team over here. What is this guy doing?
somehow. Oh, yeah. All right. What's your name? Jamaica Malone. So where, I, I got a few questions. Where do you go to school? At this middle school. Good, you're at the right school. What grade are you in? Six. Good, you're in the right place. Uh, so what we're gonna do real quick, I like to do this. This is the last grade I do that. I don't do this for seventh grade. Uh, we're gonna shoot some video that'll be on the YouTube and uh, the talk and the gram and all that stuff uh, this afternoon. About The average audience is about 200,000 people. There's a chance this is the video in your life that will have more views than anything else with you in it, okay? So I got three rules and you gotta be sure they follow my rules, okay? First off, can you do this? Do it. Whoa! Now, if you see anybody breaking a rule, you're not snitching, you're doing your job, okay? Rule number one, sit down, all right? Uh, the only people standing up are the teachers. So everybody's got to sit nicely. How are they doing? Don't so bother doing good. Yeah, they're doing great. Rule number two, guys, keep your hands to yourself. I, look, I, I deal with sixth graders. Some of you, I, I know in a crowd this big, there is somebody in here that has not washed their hands since last Christmas, and that's nasty, all right? I don't want that thing around me. How are they doing? doing great. Rule number three, hey, do not do anything to make your mom angry at me. I don't want your mom calling me up, hey, I, I was just on uh, Facebook and saw my child doing this. <laughs> so, uh, now you got one, by the way, one more time, do that, do that, I'm watching you thing. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I think we have potential for a new administrative team member here. This is good. Now, you got one more job. You're going to shoot the uh, video. So, uh, by the way, uh, when you shoot video for television and the stuff we do, we'd like for it to be like that. That's how the TV hangs on your wall. So, there you go. Two hands. Take two steps up. All right. Start over here. Hit the button. I'll wave at the camera. You're on. 200,000 people are going to see this. 200,000. No mad mom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, hit that button. All right. By the way, for our, for our teachers, rock steady hands. The hands of a surgeon. Medical school. I see a future here, all right? I mean, uh, you got steady hands. Now, I need you, you, yes, you. <laughs> so, uh, you're not going to be as good as what I've seen, but 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 you'll be in the same league. Now, listen, uh, our morning show people are asking me to do a favor. You have a line you have to deliver. All you're going to say is, hello, say your name, and I'm a sixth grade teacher at Athens Middle School. Or whatever you say, I don't care what you say, you say whatever you want to say. Just, you just say, I'm a, I'm a teacher at Athens Middle School, you got this. Hey, and when I turn that camera around, you have three, you have a line, all you have to do is say three words, good morning Alabama, say it. Good morning Alabama. This is the, the morning shift has invited me to do this. Now, y'all stand like you like each other, all right? So, uh, so I'll get to say, hey, I am, I teach at Athens Middle School. And when I point that camera, you're going to say those three words. Quiet on the set. All right? Uh, go. Hi, I'm a teacher at Athens Middle School. You didn't say your name. No, no, no. For, for, hey, for most teachers, it's a 10 take deal. I bet you're going to nail it on the set. No, second take. morning, but the, the video that you shot is going to be on the uh, YouTube and the Facebook channel at 3 o'clock today, okay? Guys, thank you all for coming. We are done. It's a wrap. Thank you.